I hollered, shoot, seat belts. Then I pulled the chute. And that's just such a gorgeous feeling. <sighs> it is holding and we're going down on the chute, the whole pair airplane. And that was just a, such a beautiful feeling, a feeling of comfort and comfort and joy, you might say. We are here at Sun and Fun in the new Paradise City area. We spotted a bright green airplane, but that's not what got our attention really. It's got a whole different engine on it. This has the HKS Turbo engine on it. We're speaking with Paul Mather today. I'm Dan Johnson, and Paul is gonna take us through some questions that we have. And so what would it take me to do to change out one engine to another engine? Paul, take us through the drill here and tell us what's different about operating the engine then we'll go back and actually look at the engine itself now this is the turbo engine though yes this is the HKS turbo 700T and uh, what the way we set up our dash is we use the Grand Rapids technology EIS and of course you have to have on a turbocharged motor you have to have a manifold pressure gauge because you monitor manifold pressure on the turbo so normally what we do is uh, you're going to have on your EIS, you're going to have your oil RPM, oil temp, EGT, CHT, and of course the manifold pressure. Of course you start out at standard manifold pressure of 29 inches or ambient pressure wherever you're at. Um, so that's your monitoring down there. On the main dash we install a master key so you can see you got 12 volts. You also have a master switch that will give electricity to all of the other systems. This key is merely to take it off and take it with you so nobody can bother your airplane. You automatically have a dual fuel pump system. And right now, pump number two is going. If I merely pop that up, pump number one will be going. And, and I can kind of hear that operating back there right now. Yeah, even. And the complete fuel pumps have separate breakers separate wires, dual wires going to each pump, dual grounds, and two separate complete pumps. All right, then you go to your computers, which are your ignition modules. Uh, the HKS calls them ignition, not CDIs. So when you turn those on, you'll notice that it will come on with a green light. It's telling it's talking. Now you turn the other one on, it does the same thing, and it's going to go blank. If at any time one of these were to go down, it automatically goes if to the other. If one there was the a failure, systems. or if you just turn it off, okay, okay, in flight, it automatically transfers, and you'll see a green flashing light saying one of my computers is down. Ah, okay. All right. So if you do it the other way, turn this one off, turn this one on, get them rolling again. Now we turn this one off. It's going to talk to you saying something's wrong with the other ignition module. At that point, you will lose a couple hundred RPM, but then it will pick back up to the normal RPM because the fuel injectors will be injecting as a true dual system. Okay? On this particular airplane, we installed the, uh, the uh, comm radio from MGL, and we have a true track autopilot. The uh, fuel system has got the and air fuel selector gauge for right, left, both, and off. And of course, all of the certified stainless oh, yeah. steel fuel lines. That's a prominent M squared trait. Yeah, that's a nice looking thing. Nice looking Ranger. So we even got autopilot on this guy. Got auto two truck <laughs> autopilot. Of course, this is a customer airplane. So as you can see, we turn everything off. Now you remove your key, so you got a safe, safe operation. So while it sits out here at the air show, 
That's correct. People might flip switches, but nothing bad's going to happen from it. Yep. And inside our wing panels, which uh, Dave will get a shot later, on the uh, right side we have the dual fuel pumps. On the left side is the dual computers, all wired up completely. For maintenance, we just have to remove two bolts, swing them open, do all your service work, bolt oh, them yeah. back. Yeah, I see they're hinged right along yep, here, so you get hinged. access to these things that are, but otherwise kind of nicely hidden, because there's a fair amount of uh, what's often called plumbing, even if it's electrical in this case, I guess. Yeah. Uh, stuff going on there, makes it look a little neater, also keeps bad stuff from happening to it, I guess. That's right, we got it all tied down with the Dell clamps so it can't move. Uh, remember, this is a thousand hour engine currently, so you change your oil and you every every hundred hours and you uh, do your normal fuel service work on your conditions and it's good for a thousand hours. Yeah, that's I mean, it's, a, it's amazing, so you'll be that's fine. That's about three times the overhaul time on a 582 Rotex. That's correct. Yeah, so it's a lot of extra service uh, and a little more power because the, yes. the HKS engine most of us know about it, the 700E. Which is the same number of cylinders, still two cylinder uh, horizontally opposed. Uh, that puts out about 60 horsepower. This does, I think, 80. Is 82. That correct? 82. 82. And it pulls 5,200 RPM with 54 inches of manifold pressure. Let's go back and have a look at the engine. Let's take a look. Tell, talk to me about the mounting of the engine and talk to me about the difference in weights compared to the 582, the 912.80, and the HKS 82 horsepower. Alrighty. Yeah, the uh, 582 uh, Rotax, it weighs empty balance, weight and balance on uh, this particular model is around the 585 pound mark. This airplane had an empty weight, weight and balance of 631. The comparable... So that's 45 pounds uh, approximately. 40 pounds, 40, yeah. 45 pounds. And uh, the uh, 912 version is up in the 690 range because that's of all... 100 pounds. 100 pounds more than the two-stroke, uh, two stroke, but about 50 pounds more than the... 82 horsepower HKS. So if your choice was, okay, 582, but you know what? I want four stroke power. I could go to a 912 uh, 80 horse, which will work fine in the airplane, but I got 100 pounds more to yep. deal with. And less usable load. And I still got 80 horsepower. Or I can choose this HKS, get all of the 80 horsepower and a couple more to boot, and I'm only not even half the extra weight of the Rotex 912. That's right, that is correct. So mounting it, what, what do you have to do differently? Now? Well, we package a kit, but the uh, lower motor mount that bolts onto the actual frame is the same as your two-stroke. We just mount it differently. Down here. Down yep, here. down here on the bottom. The HKS mount, which is this top one, that's a dedicated mount that we manufacture. We utilize berry mounts instead of the, quote, Lord mounts that are kind of common in the industry. The uh, berry mounts are very prevalent in aviation also. What it does is the berry mounts actually limit your pitch and twist on the uh, engine so this propeller doesn't move around as much as what a regular Lord mount would. So what we provide in a package kit that would go on any of this make model style airframe would be the upper mount, all of the uh, hardware to put on the wings we call them with all of your fuel lines, oil lines, all of the certified equipment, and uh, we can uh, we can help out that kit pretty easy, and that'll give you a real good four-stroke benefit. It'll give you better fuel economy of about a gallon and a half an hour less burn from a 582 to the HKS. A gallon and a half less. Yes, yeah, that's crazy and uh, of course, right now you got a thousand-hour TBO versus a 300-hour TBO. So now, if we're flying on an HKS, Paul, what is the difference in the feel for the pilot between the, the say a 582? 912 and the HKS. Alright, well, the first thing you're going to notice from the two-stroke is when you throttle that thing up and the turbo kicks in, it's got significant more thrust. And uh, this airplane uh, in level flight goes about 12 miles an hour faster. Is that right? Than level flight than the 582. And that's, that equates into better climb rate. And then you throttle back to a lesser RPM for less vibration, and of course you've got a four-stroke versus a two-stroke. So you have less vibration and the prop speeds are down even less. Yeah. Right. We run this at 5200 wide open, yeah. full okay. throttle. So yeah. we're cruising this down in the 3000 RPM range, uh, 3200 to 4800, let's say, depending on what percentage of power. The two-stroke is 6500 down to about 5000. So your cruise range at 5,000 with a two-stroke is almost our maximum RPM here. Yeah, right, wow, that's pretty significant. Hey, you've got a weight saving of about 100 pounds. How does this airplane feel to the pilot? 
Well, on all the, everybody that's flown the airplane so far in this configuration, and this is our number one pre-production airplane, the uh, thrust is the same as the big Rotax, but the aerodynamic feel is the same as the two-stroke. So you've got the light, the plane, ultralight type, handling characteristics with the thrust and power of the big four-stroke. How about just the flying part? What do you got to do just to fly a turbo-powered airplane? Absolutely nothing. It's simple. It's all in the throttle. The plane flies smooth, probably smoother than the last engine that you've had on the airplane. And you just, everything is all self-computer. It's got dual computers. Fly longer, enjoy it more. Huh? That's right. Fly longer, enjoy it more with less fuel. All right. The, um, the kit, uh, we haven't established a complete price for it. The HKS Turbo is around the $17,000 mark plus the uh, peripherals that you're going to get into, like the propeller, the spinner, a spacer, uh, to bolt it on your particular airplane. The kit, I can get engines now, so I would say if a guy were to order one today, within 30 days you'll be flying your own HKS powered turbo motor. How can you miss with that? Paul, you've given us a lot of good information about the M squared with the new HKS turbo installation on it. But you got a lot of other products and stuff we haven't touched on. Give us your website address. We'll put it up on the screen for everybody. All righty, msquaredaircraft.com. And uh, just email me, get on the web, whatever you want to do. Find all that stuff on the website. Find a lot more about Paul's airplanes and the M squared models of the many kinds on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Keeping life in a good-natured perspective is a common practice of pilots. Come on. Come on. Rancher and pilot Albert Kolk will tell you that, especially after the flying adventure he, his grandson Jordan, and two friends endured on a nighttime flight back from Seattle, crossing the rugged Manishi Mountains in British Columbia. It was a beautiful night. You could distinguish that. You could distinguish the odd river and some water below, but that's about all. There was no moon, but uh, very bright, clear night. So everything was going well until uh, something went wrong. I had completely forgotten about the shoot right about then. And then he said shoot and I remembered and all of a sudden, just like everything kind of put it in perspective a bit. It was a lot nicer. You, you, you realize that you do have some security, some safety in that. I hollered, shoot, seat belts and I pulled back the power, turned off the ignition and whatever needed to be done. Then I pulled the chute. There was a little explosion, which was good to hear. It's kind of loud, but it's good to hear that explosion. But what was even better to hear, when that parachute started to deploy. And when, when it first starts to deploy, there's that ring above that that holds it for a ways and then it starts to deploy more and more and that's just such a gorgeous feeling <sighs> it is holding and we're going down on the chute the whole pair airplane and that was just a such a beautiful feeling a feeling of comfort and comfort and joy you might say albert's airplane floated safely to the ground we got a great landing the parachute hooked a tree and it brought us around really slowly and set us down on, it was a fairly steep incline, but it was set us down in a really nice place. There was no trees, there was trees on both sides of us, but not where we landed. It was almost the perfect landing spot. And you all walked away. Yeah, everybody got out of the plane and walked away without a bruise, without a scratch, without anything. And what is your life worth? What is the life of your loved ones worth? The ones you carry, whether it's your grandson or granddaughter or child or girlfriend or wife. What's their life worth? Can you count that in dollars and cents? No way. Pull the chute, you walk away.